Let's take our Bibles and look in Jeremiah chapter 24 for our scripture reading and commentary. Jeremiah chapter 24. Verse 1 says, The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord after that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So here we are given the time and place of this visual lesson that the Lord gave to Jeremiah of two baskets of figs. It was after that Nebuchadnezzar had taken into captivity Jeconiah, who was one of the last kings of Judah before Nebuchadnezzar came back and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. And so, if you remember when we were studying in 2 Kings, chapter 24, Jeconiah had been placed as king, but he only reigned a few months. Every king that went into power did not last because the Lord had determined that this would be the end. And so when Nebuchadnezzar came a second time to Jerusalem, he came down three different times. Here he came and Jeconiah's reign was short and in his place there was one other king called Zedekiah, if you remember our study in uh, Second Kings. And so Zedekiah actually reigned for about 11 years. So we're getting down to the end here. And Jeremiah lived through all this, these events, but Zedekiah would have been the absolute last king of Judah before Nebuchadnezzar came down again the last time and completely destroyed the city and, and the temple. But he put Zedekiah in as a puppet king. And all of this the Lord was doing. That there's no king that rises or falls but what the Lord has ordained. And at the same time, we see that Nebuchadnezzar carried away, along with Jeconiah, king of Judah, the princes of Judah. And here it says craftsmen or carpenters and smiths. This is the way that Nebuchadnezzar pillaged an enemy. He took out the best and left the rest because he would use those that he took into captivity for his own benefit in his own kingdom. Hence, Daniel and his friends, when they were taken to captivity, they were, they would likely have been among these here at this time that Nebuchadnezzar took into captivity. But now let's see what Jeremiah saw. These two baskets of figs, verses two and three. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, interesting way of putting it, bad figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. And verse 3 says, Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? You know, when the Lord asks a question, it's because he doesn't, it's not because he doesn't know, but it's for Jeremiah's benefit, as any good teacher would ask questions of the students. What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. 
So pretty simple lesson here in the basket of these figs. You say, well, what were the good figs? Because we know that there's none good but God. And yet here we see Jeremiah looking at really some figs that represent people. That's what these figs represent. So now, as I've always said, if you read far enough, we get the answer. Don't stop too soon. So in verses 4 through 7, we have a description here of the good figs. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans, notice, for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. And I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Well, what do you suppose these good things are? They represent that remnant. That in spite of being taken away into captivity, yet the Lord would show mercy to them. This, this would be vessels of mercy, as Paul describes there in the New Testament. There are vessels of mercy and vessels of wrath. These would be ones that would be elect in Christ. That even though they would be taken into captivity and suffer along with the rest, yet the Lord would preserve them and bring them back, and not just bring them back physically, but as you see there, give them a heart to know God in truth and to worship him. And so these basket of good pigs, as I said, it's not because there's anything good in them in and of themselves, but it's because of how God had set his mercy upon them and purpose to be merciful and gracious unto them and for Christ's sake. That's really the lesson that we have here. And as we're studying in Ezra, we fast forward after 70 years and those that returned and began to rebuild the temple and the city, that would be some of these on the other end now of those pigs. <laughs> that the Lord had preserved, that his name should be glorified in their return. When he says here, I will set my eyes on them for good and will bring them back to this land. So here God promised already, even though at the time Jeremiah was writing, it was before the captivity or during the captivity, here it was already foreseen what we're studying right now in Ezra. It's the beauty of looking at all of these books together, whereby during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, somewhere around 538 before Christ, from what we can figure. And so the blessing here of these being taken out of the land, according to what the Lord said, was for their good. God purposed that these should not be destroyed with the rest. And therefore set his love upon them, because he had set his love upon them. We can find many examples here of what God has purposed to do for his people in the Lord Jesus Christ. That new covenant in his blood, whereby the Lord has not destroyed all sinners, but he has preserved to himself that remnant, those elect for whom Christ would come to pay the sin debt and uh, give them a new heart. A lot of what we're reading here when we get into the New Testament is applied to 
those of the New Testament regarding the promises of God that he uh, said he would fulfill. That's the only way any of us can know God, is if God's pleased to give us a heart to know him. Like it says in verse 7, I will give them a heart to know me. And they, I'm the Lord and they shall be my people. They're not his people because of anything in them. They have no will of their own, but it's the Lord that gives that heart. And therefore, they're separated out. And that's really what we see here when it talks about these good pigs. There's none good but God. And yet, in Christ, through his finished work, he declares righteous everyone for whom Christ paid the debt. And then gives them a heart, draws them by his spirit to know them. And then in verses 8 through 10, the last part of this chapter, is the basket of bad figs. It says, and as the evil figs, and this describes the depravity of these that left to themselves, there's nothing good in them. Such would be our case were it not for God's mercy. And he says, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely thus said the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah, again the last king, reigned for eleven years, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. Some of these, when Nebuchadnezzar came down and took some out and left the rest, they probably thought that the judgment was passed. But it wasn't. Here the Lord says, And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, notice, for their hurt. Those that are vessels of wrath. There's nothing good that can come from being a vessel of wrath, even though for a while, some seem to live in apparent luxury or peace. The end cannot be good. Here it's for their hurt. It says to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. You know, some people ask, what kind of God would do that? You know, it's a holy God. And any that are deceived into thinking, well, God is love, we have never heard of flee, they don't know the God of Scripture. Because here he describes the end of all those that are described here as evil figs, rotten to the core. Would any of us take a basket of figs and eat it if it was rotten? It's, it's good for nothing but throw it out. And this was the Lord through Jeremiah describing how it was it would be their end. He'll deliver them into trouble. That's all that there is for those that are not the Lord's by his grace. And in the end, just like here, these became a byword, taunt, a curse from these other nations. And God sent them into exile. Notice the difference. He sent out the people in uh, verses 6 and 7. He sent out the good things. He sent them out. That was their protection glory. Verse 5 specifically, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good things, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place. But compare that language with what we're reading here where it says he will drive them out, the bad things. End of verse 9, whither I shall drive them. And that word drive means in wrath, anger. And he would send sword and famine and pestilence among them. 
such as the judgment of God. I know people today are not accustomed to hearing of God that saves whom he will and condemns whom he will, but that's the God of Scripture. And if we're one of these that is likened to the good pigs, again, it's only because of God's mercy and not for anything in us, for Christ's sake. Precious Father, thank you for your word, how sobering it is for us to read it. But I pray that you would be pleased to teach us. And uh, in your mercy, give us hearts to know you through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We found in him, not having our own righteousness, but that which is of you, through that faith that you give, you know him. So we commend the rest of our time of worship to you and pray for your blessing. And it's Christ's name I pray. Amen.